Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Grounded Reason Podcast. Today, Joel and I are going to discuss a whole bunch of news that hit this week, uh, namely Netflix is allowing people to download stuff directly from their service, which is a godsend for the kids. So we go into that a bit. We also talk about, you know, just generally what cord cutting has been like with children. So a lot of you parents uh, might be interested in hearing that one. We also go into Amazon Prime and some of the services they picked up this week, um, along with the holidays coming up. We started, you know, just went to a general singing the praises of Amazon Prime and all the other benefits that come along with that outside of just streaming TV. Sling TV had some news as it comes to their cloud-based DVR, and we went into, of course, the big news of the week, which was AT&T's new DirecTV Now streaming service. So there was a lot for us to get to in this episode, but before we get it started, I wanted to thank everybody who has been contacting the show via you know email, Twitter, and Facebook, and asking various questions. I have been responding directly to the people and their questions, but we do have plans in the future to consolidate a lot of those questions and make an episode out of uh, certain topic areas based on the email. So if you want to be a part of that, just you know listen uh, at the end of the show where we give you all of the various ways you can contact the show and you can contact us and leave us some questions and maybe you'll be a part of one of those future episodes. But I'm sure you're all eager to hear about all the news that hit this week. So let's get this episode started. <music> We're releasing this Sunday, right? Today is Thursday, yep. December. Yeah, that's blah right. blah blah. Oh, it's first. the first, the first the of first. December. Yeah, so you guys are getting some uh, some fresh, some fresh stuff here. Hot off the press. Hot off the presses. The reason being, lots of stuff happened this week. We had Netflix announced that you can download their stuff. Yeah, and watch it later. I, I think that's a real cool. One. Couple channels came on um, to Amazon Prime. Yeah. Sling said that they were going to be cloud DVRing soon, and that's going to be in beta. Yeah. And the big news is DirecTV Now yeah. is actually out. Yep. After the AT&T release, yeah. Yeah, yes, yeah. AT&T just bought DirecTV, yep. and now they're going to have a streaming service called DirecTV Now, as in right now. Right now. Right. So we'll save that one for later. Because yeah, that's, that's probably the biggest. That's the biggie, and we want you guys to listen to the whole episode. Yeah, so, um, ideally. So, but, but, you know, Joel and I have kids very, very excited that Netflix can now go with us. Yeah. To clarify, our kids don't know this at all. No, so don't. They don't watch them or read the news. No, don't tell them. We are very excited (laughs) by the fact that we can now go to Netflix and download episodes for our children, our respective children, uh, for car rides. Yeah. Because my six year old does not really understand um, Wi Fi. No, and um, and it's happened on a new number of occasions where she's grabbing her Kindle when we're getting ready to go in the car, and I was like, I didn't, I didn't put anything on it, and she's like, I'll just watch it in the car, and I'm like, no, 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 I need to put stuff on it right. so you can take it with. I need she's to like, save it, and she's like, no, daddy, that's not how it works. I just pull up the thing and watch. It's playing, and she's showing me, right. and I'm like, no, it's because you're within range because we're in yeah. inside the the Wi-Fi. In the house. She's like, what are you talking about? Like, I'm crazy. Like, like I'm talking no, about, like, these secret, like, invisible... D- Dad, right? do you mean to tell me there's some sort of magic bubble yeah. that lets me interact right. with the internet so, around our house? So I tried to explain it to her. And that I was there like, is, in fact, And I showed her bubble. the router, and yeah. she's just looking at me like, yeah, right. That's <laughs> just stupid. Right. That's, I, come on, I'm six. I'm not, right. I'm not four. Right. I'm six. There's no way you're pulling that one on me. <laughs> So. so yeah, and my my now seven year old uh, basically has like the same sort of thing. In fact, my favorite thing he does is that you know I have a traditional laptop, right? And he'll come up to it and he'll start poking the screen, oh, trying does to interact too. with it. Yeah, and I'm like, and I'm like Stop oh it. no, no, sorry, son, this isn't the tab. Yeah, I've got like kid fingerprints all over yeah, my screen. Yeah, daddy has a regular laptop. Well, see, they messed it up because Microsoft released actual yeah, like, sure. their laptops. Yeah, have 
like, even if you get like a yep. full legitimate laptop, their OS is touchscreen. Yeah. So all win 10. Right. So, stuff. but I have, you know, Mac. Yeah, me too. And my kid pokes it like she is going to put her finger through Which the display. Which I wouldn't want them doing with a tablet anyway. No, 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 no. So, so the, the bottom line is Netflix is setting this up. So that means all their content will be, you know, something you could save down for car rides or airplane trips. Is it trips. all of it? Is it every bit? I I'm, think so, but we have to double check. Yeah, I have to check on that. I did. I did hear. I mean, I'm assuming it's a it's a lot of it. I know, like licensing agreements can get dicey. I wouldn't yeah. be shocked if you get you know here or there. Yeah, I guess couple. it's possible. But so I just want to you know, but majority of it is going to be available for download. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, it reminds me a lot of Prime, right? Like, it's yeah, Amazon you Prime, Prime. You can do that right yep. now, and. If we're smart, my wife and I do that before we go on rides wherever. But some of the shows my kids like, you know, at least where we normally get them is Netflix, you know, so it's going to be pretty convenient. Oh, yeah. Because, like, I mean, the kids – I always talk to somebody at work today because they were asking me – work, work, not the blog. Right. Um, they were asking me about cutting the cord. Um, and they were like, well, how did your – like, how how did your kids – I need Disney. I need Nickelodeon. You really don't. Like, yeah. once you cut it off, they're angry for, like, a minute. And then you just, like, find something and put it on. And yeah. then show them how to use it. And my kids were, like, love it. They hate – if we go away or a hotel. regular television. They can't stand, like, on demand. and Because yeah. it just doesn't – because the shows are all broken up. Like, on on demand, they only have a few here, a few there. It's like my spattering. My son in particular gets really – aggravated like if we're watching scheduled television and like it'll go from you know whatever cartoon to a completely different cartoon and he's like i want to watch the next episode of that one penny my my uh my my daughter she's six the six-year-old she says uh she's like i hate this she's like it's like the radio yeah. she was like <laughs> complaining about the it television is, right and 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 you know we're <laughs> like back in my day you had to Touch the TV with your hair. Yeah, I know. I would I would explain to them. It's like it the TV show would only come on at a certain time, and if you missed it, that was it. Yeah. Like, and then like we got a we were early DV DV um um DVR. Jeez, we're early VCR adopters, yeah. and uh, like you know the top loader. Oh yeah, had to push that thing down. And we had the. Did you have the external rewind thing to save the heads on your? Oh no, uh, no, we did oh, not. We did. I had a lot. I know. I know a lot of friends had that, but we had a remote for the v, for the VCR. But had a cord. A cord, yes. And and basically, it was like you know you'd have to run that cord back. And yeah. we had an extender. We had the same on thing, it. but that was the, to me that is the saddest phase of technology, where it's like, oh, you mean this thing that seems conceptually like a good idea. But we don't know how to execute it? Wrong. Yeah. yeah. But it's I mean, like those uh, charge pads they have for the phone where you – if I put my phone explicitly on this one place, it will proximity charge. Yeah, but those like, really don't that, That's my work point is all of all. those. At least the remote would work. Yeah, that's true. And, you know, it was better than like, you know, my, my grandfather poking me with a stick. You know, that was his remote. It was like a yeah. long stick. Hey, boy, get up and change the channel. <laughs> uh, honestly, you know, from your grandfather's perspective, that was a very effective remote. Right. He was a he was an early innovator. Yeah. Of you know, I would say. <laughs> so so there we go. So that's so one ne- big announcement. So you can download Netflix. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's a big and deal. Another one. Um, Amazon Prime added two big channels to their offering. You have to pay for it. Subscribe. Yeah, which to one it. were those? HBO and Cinemax. Oh yeah. Yeah, you can now get that, and they have Showtime as well. So yes, they do. they've locked up they the have stars and as stars well. too. Yeah. So and that includes Encore because I think they're owned yes, by the same company. Stars and Encore, I believe, are owned by the same company. That's the game for your premium TV. Yeah, I mean, like honestly, it's a huge deal now because you can buy it all a la carte, which is what people have complained about for decades. Right. Wanting to get, you know, specific channels and and now you can with the, even the premiums. Yeah, and that they're the first what that's cool because they're the first that really locked them all up that I can think of. Yeah, there's nobody else. I don't think has. anyone has them all locked up no. at this point. You kinda have to you know, mix and match. Or um, or the obvious is go through the, the major cable provider. Yeah, and show, honestly like, and that's it. I have see I, I have both Prime and Netflix. Yeah, me too. Um but 
if I had to pick one or the other, I'd, I'd pro- pick Prime. Prime because the free shipping. Yeah. Christmas is coming. I mean, I love Netflix. I would not want to pick. I wouldn't right? either because I like their original programming. Yeah. And I mean, what I would probably do if I had to pick, and I don't because a lot of this stuff I write for with a blog, so I have to keep up and on a lot Netflix of Netflix is pretty cheap. It is. But um, if I had to, I would just pick it up when a new series came out I want to yeah. watch. And or just like save it up and say, I'm going to get it for these are, months and binge watch it. There are certain shows that you can't get on Prime. You can't go buy them. That's what I do. Right? A lot of my cable, I just go and I just but go buy the get, show. But you can get, you know, everything but the most current season on Netflix for free. Right? Mm-hmm. Like uh, Salem's one of those yep. that I believe you can get, like, I think it's like season one and two. And, you know, you can watch that a good show and you know there's lots of shows like that oh yeah well i mean like a, I mean, there's a whole back catalog of great tv mm-hmm. on on netflix because they i mean they got like all the old twilight zone episodes oh, yeah. and like all that stuff but um with the, the thing with prime though is you get the free shipping the music you have all that you know there, there's a ton of music content with it yeah. it's just really a better it's probably the best value it's, out there it's a Overall, between Prime and then the ability to easily augment Prime with like individually purchased content. Yeah, but you can do that anyway. Well, like but you, that, you don't. Yeah, I, just, I guess you don't true. need to have Prime to do the um, to Amazon buy the instant content. videos. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we thing is, I've had Prime for like six years. Oh yeah, I had whatever, before they did I had video for yeah. shipping since they offered it. Yeah, well, that's the thing. To me, it was like free video because. Yeah. The shipping was kind of already anyways, yeah. already pay- uh, Christmas. I mean, you'll you'll make your money back there alone if you're shopping through Amazon. Well, in here in Baltimore, we have that. Uh, what is the the service where they? Oh yeah, it comes in like two hours, an hour. Yeah, it's amazing. Like we, so, what it is uh, for anyone who doesn't have this, uh, because I, I they only do it right now in certain right they metropolitan. Po- we were uh, they pilot they piloted we pilot, in yeah. Baltimore. But uh, a bunch, I think, major metropolitan areas have this now. But basically what you do, I think it's like uh, Amazon Now or something like that. And you can order a product from Amazon and they'll ship it to you almost immediately, like within a couple hours. And where that's been useful for us is, you know, we have a baby, my wife and I. And, um, you know, inevitably we run out of baby wipes. Yeah. And it's like, okay, we had just enough for the baby to go to bed and not have poop all over him. Right. Uh, but we are out of luck for tomorrow. So we hop on this thing, order, boom. Yeah, they come right there. Yeah, we had an inch. I think I actually might have talked about this. I don't know. But uh, the cat ate, for some reason, the apple cord, apple charger, the apple. Okay. <laughs> I think you told me no, that. I don't, yeah. Like, I don't know what the hell was wrong with my cat, but he just decided to just, I'm going to eat this apple cord. Yeah, well. And he, see, and we were leaving to go to, I think we were leaving, yeah, we were going down to Florida to take the kids to Disney. Yeah. In like eight hours. And that's the linchpin of the trip is yeah. like an apple cord because <laughs> we right. got to charge our phones. The kids like the iPad this, you on the plane. You got to take your cat to the vet. Well, you know, screw the cat. He- <laughs> <laughs> we want to get to Disney. Where's my iPhone right, charger? Right. <laughs> so he he deserved it. Um, so we're like, what are we gonna do? Like, I gotta, we gotta, we we, you know, I was at work and she, Allison had the kids and she didn't want to take the, have to go take the, she had to pack, so it's not like she could run out and get one. Right. So I was like, call, so call like you know, check on Amazon, see if they can bring. It's like, lo and behold, an hour later, you know, we had Apple yep. cords showing up at our house. They're amazing. So, I mean, like. I I honestly don't know how they do it, and um, I I'm I know I've talked about it on the show that um, we have uh, a Kindle Fire for uh, we have two in the household, and they're fantastic little devices for what you pay, and you know the integration with Prime and yeah everything else is is pretty convenient. So yeah, like our kid, we do a lot of um, I mean I. Some people kind of frown upon this, but um, my older, my older, she's nine. She, she can, she reads well. Yeah. But she has a bit of a focus issue when it comes to a book for some reason. And it's not, it's, it's like, they're so do I. Like a chapter book to her is daunting. She doesn't think 
you know, she, it, it's not an enjoyable thing for her because she's just worried about how long this book is, even though it's a book she might enjoy. So we do audio books with her. Because, sure. And, and, the, and I tested it out because I was like, okay, look, we're going to read Harry Potter. I'll read it. You listen to it. And then we'll talk about this book just, just to see what her comprehension level yeah. would be from audiobooks. She knew it way better than I did. Yeah. Her comprehension level was better than mine through the audiobook. It's actually, I, I have a very similar thing. Like, right. I've always been preoccupied because I don't read particularly fast. Yeah, nor do I. And so it's just one of those things where I'm going, oh, man, this is going to take me a month to get through. And inevitably, whatever I I choose to read is like a 700, 800 page book because I don't like myself, I guess. Right. And And so I'm just constantly thinking about... I'm on page 74. Yeah, that's where I am too. I just like the, I, I get exactly what you're saying because yeah. uh, my mind will but go. But audiobooks, I could, I literally listen to them every day. Man, I hate the sound of the voice inside my head is maybe what it is. I yeah. like to hear someone else's. But um, I completely, I, I, and I've had people say, well, you know, like frown on that or like you're let your what? kid like, I don't know. But I, I kind of look at it as, well, she's retaining it. She's com- And that's the whole point of reading the book. And she reads well. Like I've heard her read aloud. Yeah. She does okay. Um, so the main way I use it is like for books that are too long or too dry for me to read. Like ones I know I wouldn't sit down and read. Um but I'll listen to, like, because I have to drive for work or whatever. Like, that's when I mostly buy on audiobooks. And it's great. I mean, like, I've, con- you know, consumed uh, some books that were... I did one that was, because uh, I'm a dork, uh, the definitive biography on uh, Cornelius Vanderbilt. And... It was 37 hours long. I mean, that's a long book. Yeah, yeah. It was like 1,200 pages or something. And I was like, "There, I want to know about this guy. I apparently did not want to know as much as I learned because <laughs> uh, it was just a lot. But uh, but I would never have read that. Yeah. Well, so the reason I took us down this audiobook tangent. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What were we talking about? Well, I, no, I know. I, I brought it up because... The Kindle. My kid cannot live without her Kindle at this point because she, like, now that we've kind of allowed audiobooks yeah. to be kind of open game for her. Because I know a lot of parents, when they're, re- oh, you read the book or, you right. know, read it, then you can listen to it. Or you read a book and I'll let you listen to this audiobook. And now that she has free reign over audiobooks, she's just consuming stories, yeah. like, all the time. It's now. good for you, period, I, I think. And so, so she, and, and the fact that we have Prime. Uh, gives us access to like certain ones, and then yep. we also picked up the um, the Audible through yeah. Amazon. How do you like that? I've I've thought about it, but I've well, never it's, done it. Well, it's it's okay. It's a monthly subscription that's a bit pricey, but if you're going to listen to a lot of audiobooks, it it's works out well worth favorite. it. Yeah, because you get like three Saudi books are steep. You sometimes. get three books a month, and and I could do that. I could I probably do three books and a i month. can't remember i can't remember the monthly fee i want to say it was like 15 bucks which is the cost of one audiobook oh Easy. i've had yeah like that crazy one i was just telling you about was probably 35 40 yeah, bucks. yeah 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 like yeah I'm, I'm saying like you know your romance cheap paperback bathroom reader yeah, is like 15 15 bucks um yeah. but I, this is like um so so yeah you're saving quite a bit of money if and and the fact that like she's She's using it a lot. I'll I'm I'm using it, you know, I'm I'm probably fair amount, a yeah. fair amount. Like maybe one or one a month. I'll I'll kind of like, you know, grab and listen to when yeah. I'm out of podcasts. That's so. not bad at all. So so that's two of the big offerings we wanted to talk about. Yeah, the third, which I'm excited about, um, Sling TV. Yeah. Um, is they, they actually put their they put a DVR service in beta. And you can sign up for it on their website, and I will put the link in the show notes. But what they're going to do is they're going to put it in open, like they're going to put it in beta. Uh, once you just like go in and you give them their email to sign up, and they will, I think by the end of this month, they'll start picking people. Um, and at launch, um, they get a hundred hours of cloud DVR storage at no charge for the people wow. who were picked for the beta. Now. 
Um, it's invitation only for this first part, but then I'm sure they're going to go into like an open beta at some point and yeah. then release it. Most of those invitations, like I remember I did, uh, wow, I'm dating myself, but Google wave back in the day. Oh yeah. I remember that. Oh, I loved Google wave, but I mean, that was back when that was novel. Like the idea of putting all your types of content in one place. But, uh, that was an Im- invitation only. And I felt like I was the cool kid. There were like it was. I turned around to everyone I talked to. Oh yeah, I'm yeah. I'm sure if you go and you throw your email in there, you'll mm, probably be fine. Sh- yeah, chances are you'll get picked. But um, it's going to roll out first on Roku devices. So if you have nice. Sling TV and yeah. Roku, I would go ahead and sign up for it. Um, here, you know what? It's um www.sling.com forward slash DVR. I'll put that link in the notes too. But it was easy enough for me to read. It's not some long, annoying... Our thing. listeners know how to use Google. That is that is true. They do. But Sling might not be strong on the uh, SEO. Uh, yeah, they might not true. have good search engine optimization. So it might be up there. I'm sure you can find it out there somewhere, though. Um, but I'm just trying to make it easy. Yeah, you, just, you know, hit the hit the phone. comes good, right up in the show good notes. Good point, man. I don't know. Um, yeah, but that's for Sling, uh, Orange, and Blue on Roku. Oh, and refer to the previous episode... About sling, oh uh, yeah, that's regarding true. Uh, the orange and blue. That's true. In I case did. you have any questions, because we go into that uh, in pretty pretty significant detail. Yeah, I numbered all the episodes, by the way. So um, I don't know if you've if you've noticed, but if you look on, if you're a subscriber or if it's in your app, if you pull up uh, Grounded Reason podcast on the feed, I just went back and just numbered episodes for um easy reference so we can refer back to them and right now i'm stalling as i go up and i look for the the number on that article (laughs) i mean on on that uh, as i go back and look for the number on hello my baby hello my honey right so uh oh yeah so if you go back and you listen to episode three you can check it in get all the ins and outs there of sling tv now oh the big one DirecTV is finally launched. Huzzah! Hooray! So, AT&T finally unveiled its much-talked-about DirecTV Now service. So, it'll provide, like, cable over the internet, just like Sling TV and Vu. So, while there's been a lot of hype around the product, initial offering... Mm, on par with those two services, maybe a bit better here or there in yeah, channel. I mean, it's got available. Lot, it's got a lot of good stuff. It does. The best thing, which I will say, and I want to, I'm actually going to lead with this since we were talking about HBO and Cinemax earlier. Yeah, I'm reading it right now. It's five bucks a month as an add-on for that is each of those. Not bad at all. That's really good, and that's kind of like for <laughs> that me. Really is that is a that is going to be something where I might. You know, because the channel offerings, while they do have a hundred channels total, yeah. you're and uh, there's some nuance to this. There's some tiering. Yeah. There's some tiering, and the biggest package is seventy bucks a month, which no cord cutter in their right but, mind is I mean, probably going to be paying. But the the what's it called? Live a little. The live a, the, the live a little has pretty much everything you would get with like a VU or a PlayStation. Actually, it's got 60 channels. So that's, that's pretty much, is I think it, that's the most. Is it me or are they kind of like, they got like very moon over my hemi, like uh, names for all of their tiers. Oh, they do. They that's do. It's, so it is. Lame. It's like I've walked into the Denny's of streaming. Yeah. I mean, I mean, God bless them. Like, cause this L- stuff doesn't seem like bad offers, uh, but yeah, the like, naming convention, here we go. like live a little. For $35 a month. Just right. Mm, $50 a month. Go big. And gotta have it. Is it like, did they have like, I don't know, did they grab like the uh, cast of friends and put them in a, in like <laughs> Someone a. Someone got a little whiteboard crazy. They That's did. All I'm they did. It was like, it was but, like they grabbed a bunch of people from the 90s. But, and they're like, give us, give us some catchphrases that we can name these tiers over. Oh, here you go. And you had like a Chandler S guy go, I gotta have it. You gotta have it. <laughs> so, yeah, so, I don't but, know. But I'm looking at it and like live a little, which I sound ridiculous. Oh, yeah, I hate that. saying it. I, um, it. I hate myself. It has most of the channels. I, yeah, I really, <laughs> really am <laughs> upset with myself. Uh, it has, you know, CNN, Nickelodeon, MSNBC, Bloomberg, 
which is one of my faves. As uh, you've mentioned Central, many, uh, many, many, many times. Many, many times. <laughs> a big Bloomberg fan. I call it an addiction. Yeah, I'm not, a new- <laughs> I am not an interesting person, Dennis. I have told people this. Uh, USA, which I like. I I got reruns of Burn Notice. I'm a happy fella. hey Um And then, you know, sci-fi, like, for my bad horror movie addiction. Disney for the kids. Disney. I I have kids? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Disney, um, Disney Junior. Cartoon uh, Network, BBC. I mean. Yeah. We did say AMC, right? Oh, I didn't. Okay, but, yeah, because that's, a, that's yeah, a big one. That's kind of a big deal for me, Walking Dead. Right, right. Um, so um, it does have, I mean. It's not bad. Not you know, bad at all. Because um, BBC America is there, so I got Orphan Black. You know, yeah. like, it, it's got a lot of quality channels, and it's 35 bucks. But here's the thing, and 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 we should have, I mean, I might have, sh- I should have led with this, because I did kind of bury the lead here. Now, but if you do, if you sign up during this introductory period, you get, ugh. And I'm only sighing because I have to say this. Go big. You get right. go you get go big for live a little prices. That's right. Thirty five dollars a month. So you can you I feel s- like I should have a slide whistle when I'm saying I know. That's that's like a morning um, zoo show here. Um so you get a hundred plus channels. Because basically the way it works is if you have your live a little, you get all loaded channels. Then you get the just right, which is the next tier up for fifty bucks. Which a month. has some other nice channels. It's in you it. know what? These channels yeah. I think they're just right. And they're just right. So then you can, um, or, and the next, you know, with that one, you get a bunch of, that's where you're like um, regional sports networks. Yeah, come you're in. getting a lot of sports channels. And then when you hop up to the Go Big, which is the special offer, you know, if if you happen to care about like the golf channel or NBA TV yeah. or NHL. Uh, whoa, ten- get, tennis channel. Tennis channel. Yeah, so <laughs> get those. But I mean, like the one that I care about with those, I guess it's two. Is BBC World, which I enjoy, and uh, Sundance TV. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. So, but, but, but so anyway, well. you get the good, you get the go big, which is normally, which is supposed to be priced at sixty bucks, and that's priced for thirty five dollars a month. Now, what they say is that you will keep the thirty five dollar a month price until you cancel, but for the go big, but yeah. they reserve the right to take that away at any time. Oh, that's horrible, but whatever. You know, it's like... It means you get a discount for a period of time. Right, it, that's basically what they're saying. And, you, you get it indefinitely. And, and then you could always I just guess. drop down the service, presumably. Yeah. Read your contract. Right. But... But, but, it, it, but it's no... Um, it, it is no... There is no contract, because it's... Oh, you know, yeah, I guess it's a month, right. month. month to month. Month to month. So they have these deals where you can sign up for a few months, and then, you know, they give you a little bit of something yep. extra. So, um... If you sign up for three months of service, you get a free Apple TV. Yeah. That's the fourth gen uh, for 150 bucks normally is what that costs. Yep. So that's $150 free if you sign up for three months. So you're actually making out there because yeah. three months of service is what, uh, 105 Was that right? Do, 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 yeah, 105 yeah. bucks. Um, and uh, it says if you sign up for one month of service – you get an Amazon Fire TV stick. So I, I guess they're just kind of giving them away. Yeah, they're they're assuming – I mean like honestly, this is very similar to like a, a rebate right. uh, method. Yeah, because they give you the free trial. Yeah. So if you stick – I'm guessing if you stay on for that first month and you pay them, they'll give you a Fire yeah. TV stick. Yeah, what they're, what they're assuming is that the vast majority of people won't cancel after the term, you know – that is necessary to get the Apple TV. Like the, they most, they're counting on the fact that they're going to get their money back for you being in for the fourth and fifth month. Because if, if they get to month five with you, they're in the green all of a sudden on that Apple uh, TV, they handed you. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, that makes sense. And hell, if you're looking to cut, yeah, you know, if you're looking to leave Comcast or somebody, you bad, don't have a fire not stick. A bad hey, way we'll to go. give you a fire stick if you come on over. Uh, one of the things I was going to say about this is, like, you know, the in the article you have on the on the blog, uh, there's a decent little like, hey, watch what Directv now looks like. Oh yeah, video. Yeah, 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 and yeah. you get a decent sense of what the interface is like, which a lot of people like. I I don't know. I mean. They could have it as a bulleted list for me because I'm simple. 
but a lot of people really care about the interface. So if that's something you're interested in, like check it out on the on the uh, blog, because it, I mean to me it looks a lot like say an Amazon, uh, darker tones and stuff. If you care about that type of thing, yeah. Well, um, um, that actually that video is put together by um, a guy on the Reddit. Uh, cord cutters subreddit. Oh, neat. Yeah, yeah, named Nick Capicio, and I like I sent him a message saying, "Hey, I'm gonna embed this on the blog." He's like, "Cool." So there it is. Way to go, Nick. Yeah, I mean, it was that's a it's a really good yeah. review of the service. Yeah. Um, so if, yeah, I was actually planning on getting the service and doing this sort of thing uh, with it, and his was just so good that I'm just like, I'm not gonna do it now. I'm not gonna do better than this guy with yeah. with it. So, I mean, he, he did a really good job, and it, it kind of shows you all the ins and outs of the new service. Yeah, it, and that's one of the things that I get a kick out of all this stuff is that, like, um, it, it's just nice to see how many people are out there trying new stuff and kind of passing it around to each other. Like, hey, I learned this. Like, on the on the blog, there's a couple of people that have written back already. Oh yeah, you search and, the comments on the blog, you yeah. find out all kinds of good stuff. And a lot of times, articles I write are based off questions I get in yeah the comments Bright or folks it's, writing in interesting things. Yeah, or it's some something that somebody has said that's like spot on, and I'll just yeah. like write a post that kind of like elaborates Summarizes or some or, or yeah, or like kind of like expands upon that point. And yeah, you know, so it, it is, and that's the cool thing about a blog is it's just not. Like my back voice, yeah. it's a bit of back and forth, and a lot of the stuff I write is kind of based on like what the community is giving back and what yeah. people are saying and people are asking. Um, so it wasn't going to be all puppy dogs and sunshine. Yeah, all right, Debbie Downer. What well, do there's got? no DVR because they like they're they're not going to have a DVR at launch. I was hoping, you know, considering. It is yeah. direct TV that they might have something. And and actually, you know, that's they, kind of a downer. It is. Uh, they are planning one for next year, though, they, they're I mean, saying. It's, so uh, it's not the end of the world. It's but not. That's but not great. The, the, the problem, the problem with a lot of this, these and I don't like the term skinny bundle, but that's what a lot of people are calling these. Yeah. But I always look at skinny bundle as kind of like that, you know, dumbed down. Yeah. Like network TV box. That the cable company will give you. Yeah, well, because skinny in the things we talk about has a certain connotation. Right. Right. And yeah. And, and this is really just it's kind of those cable channels over the Internet. The, the the thing is, is due to these weird licensing agreements, um, the on demand and ability to pause and rewind is different per network. So it's it that's always a bit annoying uh, when it comes to these cable over the internet yeah. type services. Uh, so I think really that's why a lot of people have been gravitating towards view or a PlayStation's product. And also why sling TVs announced this beta is because a DVR will go like a long way to solving a lot of those issues. And it'll probably keep people, you know, more willing to, you know, keep that service. The churn yeah. rate will burn. It wants these DVRs, you know, are put out. Cause I think that, right. that's the one big complaint I've gotten from people is that, you know, they can't watch it when they want to watch it. It's, right. you know, which is really why I just buy all the stuff from iTunes and Amazon for the most part. I mean, honestly, I've gotten to where, particularly with movies, I haven't done it too much with television shows and it, I'm not sure why, right? It's just some mental yeah, well, that's kind of like I just started doing the math on it, and yeah. we were only watching like f- at the time we were watching like five or six like Real legitimate shows, cable right. shows a year, and we had Hulu, so that gave us a ton of stuff already. Yeah, it does. Um, like you just gotta wait a day, uh, and so the stuff that wasn't on Hulu, we would buy, and it turned out to be like you know maybe one hundred and fifty, one hundred and sixty bucks. For the year. Yeah. For those five or six shows. So, I mean, that's... Yeah, and you own them, so you could re-watch them right. whenever you want. No, I mean, if you're sitting there watching, you know, Real Housewives and, like, all those reality shows, it's it's not going to work for you. Yeah. And, I, you know, I, I read a really good article. Oh, I can't even remember where. Well, the gist of it, I, I feel bad because I can't remember. The gist of it was essentially, if you're going to go cut the cord, don't 
look at it like you need to replace cable. Look at it like I'm going to save money and kind of change the way I watch TV. Yeah. Because it's more – you're definitely going to a more active viewing yeah. – it's just a different thing. It is. It Don't is. Don't think of it as I'm going to get cable through the internet. Right. It's I'm going to be entertained in a different manner. Yeah. And that's really yeah. and I've discovered yeah. I think it's so fair. much so much stuff yeah. that I like I was researching Curiosity Stream, which yeah. is a really good uh documentary streaming service. Now, I remember, you know, when I first got cable, my poison was those Discovery um, History Channel back. Sure. Well, before it was the Hitler Channel. And then, you know, before that time, because now, because it went through like uh, an evolution where they actually showed like real history, yeah. real like history shows. Yeah. And then it turned into the Hitler Channel where it was pretty much all Hitler all the time. Uh, you know, showing just World War II, all... uh, To be be clear, Dennis is referring to the History Channel. Yeah. That that, uh, constantly plays... Yeah, exactly. Stuff about Hitler. Well, that was that. That was like, you know, like maybe in the late 90s. Mid-2000s. Mid, was it mid 2000s? Was it that late? I don't know. Well, anyway, that's all it was. It was just like every time I turned it on, it was... Not it was World was War II Germany. So, editor or whatever right. was obsessed with World War II. And then is it what is it? Is it Ice Road Truckers or is it a yeah, Latin? Is went, that is yeah, that what that it is a, now? Okay. Then they went well, I don't know if that's what it is now. No, but, but it was they went reality like they everybody went reality else. Reality T V for right. a while and it was like history made every day or whatever. Right, yeah. And I was I was I was ticked when it became the Hitler channel. Because I was because sure. I was like it's a turn off. You want to watch different parts of history. Exactly. And when I saw like a, a World War II documentary every week or so, fine. But it was it was nonstop. I, I would say every week's probably appropriate. Uh, but I digress. The point was is back then you could get you know all of these you know documentary type shows and. Like the, I was a big Nova fan, stuff like that. Sure. You can't find that stuff anymore on cable TV. It just no. It, without, I mean, you might di- maybe like you know one in the morning, two in the morning, you might find it. But there are channels that would play this stuff all the time. Yep. Curiosity Stream is that service now. All like right. you, it gets you back to like real history documentary, real uh, science, you know, yep. real nature documentaries. And it's like two ninety nine a month to watch in standard definition, yeah, which is so, awesome. Yeah, and there's a lot of good services out there like that. So, getting back to Directv now, yeah, a little bit of a tangent. Um, there's one thing I did want to bring up, and this is a plus if you're an AT and T customer, even though it pains me to say this, and I'll yep. explain why in a second. But if you're an AT and T customer, you can get Directv now, and you can watch it with on a mobile device without it can like without it counting against your data plan at all right like it's zero yep against you know if you get five gigs a month you can watch direct tv on your phone and it won't affect any of that honestly pretty awesome if you're one of their subscribers okay and i know if you're a customer of at&t you're like this is fantastic but this kind of deal while get, it's kind of like a Twilight Zone deal, like yeah. where, you know, a guy meets like the devil and the devil's like, if you give me your soul, I'll give you any wish. And the guy's like, oh, I'll wish for I want to be the richest man on the on the earth. And the devil's like, fine. And then the devil sets a plague free, which kills everyone. And you die last. Therefore, you're the richest man on earth. Yeah. That's kind of what this plan is well, it's, like. It's the <laughs> because not I, I mean plan. It's it's the zero rating. It's against the spirit of open internet. Is really what yeah. it's at. Because we in our net neutrality show we talked about this where you can't have fast lanes where you're charging you know other services or content more money based off of you know they're my competitor. I don't I want to charge I'm them going to more charge them so more, they, for their for their for their service. Yeah. This is the kind of the inverse of that. It's I own this service. It's free on my pipes. Yeah, effectively what I'm going to do is say 
I'm going to charge everyone what I'm currently charging them, but I'm going to make all my stuff free. Exactly. Which is a relative, you know, fast lane for your stuff or the, the owner of the lane, you know, rel- uh, relative to everyone else. Exactly. And and the mm. problem is while it seems like it's a good deal, which it is, if you're a customer of at t it's a great deal because right. it's not going to count against your data. What will happen? And I pretty much guarantee it. If this is kind of allowed to happen, um, you're going to see, AT&T, because they just bought up a bunch of content like HBO yeah. and TBS and TNT, those channels will be freely delivered. So you're going to get trapped in, we're going it, to, it's going to, cord cutting will evolve into a world where it's just like cable, where you need to purchase this bundle from AT&T. That is the intent. Exactly. That's what they want. So they're mm-hmm. going to kind of hold, it's going to turn into a monopoly a bigger monopoly well, than it is. Uh, that's what I was saying. It's a content it, monopoly. It's it's an it's anti-competitive right. behavior, and someone will. It, okay, again, I, I've I've said this before, but like trying to figure out what's going to actually happen in the future is wild eyed. It is wild eyed speculation. It is wild eyed. But if okay, but I'm I'll, looking out I'll on say, the marketplace. Yeah, yeah. How many uh, Comcast? Because this is what okay we have AT and T. Here's the companies where they have a you know a they're a huge internet service provider yep. and they have a lot of content. And really, we're talking about Comcast. We're talking about Charter. Verizon. Verizon's like a, a I mean compared to those guys, they're a small player honestly. Yeah. And they don't really do they, they don't own enough content. They don't have enough content, and they really I mean they're second to AT and T on the telecom side, but mm. there's uh, AT and T is way ahead of them. Yeah. So so they have okay. So we have AT and T. You have Charter and Comcast. Yep. Charter really doesn't own that much content, if any, that yep. I can think of off the top of my head. Comcast owns a ton. Yep. AT and T owns a ton. AT and T has a huge mobile presence. Presence where Comcast does not. Yeah. Once five G comes out. And more and more internet starts to go wireless. Yeah. That's ball game. Well, here's the... Okay. How much do I want to speculate, right? So there's a couple of different things that that seem likely, I'll say. One is someone brings this to the Department of Justice or... Uh, the Federal Trade Commission. Yeah, if there was only, like, you know, a government agency that was in charge of regulating this sort of thing. Who would do that? I don't know. Well, there used to be these people. (laughs) Uh, So, anyways, setting that aside and not getting back into the last, like, three episodes we've had. um, So so that is a, a likely option. Another likely option is you could see a couple of, say, like a Verizon who's got a big, big mobile footprint and a Comcast who has a big content footprint team up. Oy. Those things, well, it happens all the time. <laughs> well, again, it happens all the time. And theoretically, from an economics perspective, you only need two firms for a perfectly competitive market. Yeah, well... <sighs> I, I'm just saying, like, theoretically, in practice, that doesn't work. No. But theoretically, that's all you need. And so, you need those two firms to compete in the same areas. Compete. Yeah. Yeah, they don't in this And this is, this is the problem with our overall system is because of the nature of it is geographically based. Yep. And those are almost... No, not almost. They just are by their nature. Yeah, there aren't many anti competitive. There aren't many right? places where yeah. AT and T and Comcast are competing. There's a few. Yeah. There's a few, but there. I mean, it's there's yeah. not many. Yeah, same with Verizon, right? Like right. Verizon owns where it owns. Exactly. AT and T owns where it owns. Yeah. And and there's you know bleed over and whatever, but not much. Yeah, because really, what this will do is. <sighs> Any hopes of like an ISP just being an ISP and not having any content they can leverage? 
that's not those aren't they're not going to fly because well, people are going to say why should I pay you know why why should I pay money to get this service when it's going to cost against my data so and and that I mean that's what a reasonable cons- question right and that's what a consumer and and because they're going to be the only game in town I, I think the only thing we can do is watch it we, uh, right? we can watch it yeah right because we're talking. When was this announced? The zero Yesterday? rating? Yesterday? Yeah, but the FCC, the problem was, is because there was a lot of push when they put the FCC rules in place uh, mm-hmm. for net neutrality to actually put a zero rating clause in there. Yeah. And it didn't happen. And a lot of people were actually, prior to the election, Wheeler was calling AT&T into question over this. Uh, about yeah, this. Wheeler, the commissioner of the yeah. FCC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, you know, they were actually calling AT&T into question about doing the zero rating. Well, well I mean, they I, just basically, Congress sent a letter to the FCC saying to cease and desist on all new business until the new administration comes in, and the FCC yielded. So, yeah. probably and, not going to see that. And honestly, if you think about it from AT&T's perspective, it's kind of a master stroke. They're playing within the rules right. that are set. It's really, really smart business. It just stinks um, for the broader market, yeah. for the AT&T subscribers. And when I get up on the soapbox. It's pretty great in the short run. But again, it's a short run thing. In in my case, when I refer to short run, I mean uh, outside the three-year mark, right? Because outside of that... Once someone has consolidated monopolistic powers, who knows what's going to happen with pricing? Right. And I don't, when I get up on the soapbox like this, I don't – like I'm all for corporations making sure. as much money as they can. Yeah. My – the real problem isn't companies no. or even regulators. No. Because the problem is is when you get a lot of money into politics, yeah. the money starts paying – for the regulators yep. to make regulations, and then yes. it just creates this feedback loop the, the, where companies are basically greasing the wheels to get the regulators to make the rules. They make some rules to make these companies profitable. Those companies give more money, and it's just a massive feedback yeah, the, loop. The way or the term of art that I've heard used for it is uh, industry capture, yep. where it's basically – like the the regulatory bodies that should be safeguarding against these behaviors have been Corrupted. co-opted yep. yeah by the industry they're supposed to be regulating right. and that's why I'm in the middle because I know you get this left battle where they're always going to be blaming the left is always going to be blaming the companies and the right's always going to be blaming the regulators eh. but that's not that's not that's no. it's a false dichotomy yeah. it's it, the the real problem is the system being gamed. And if you're a company and you can, that it, it's all fair game. Yeah. If, if that's the rules that you're set to play in, then yeah. so be it. But I don't expect, I, I, I just being straight. I do not expect a and to do anything less. No. In fact, if, if they were to do anything less, they would be doing a, disinterest to their shareholders. Right. And but that's why I bring this up. That being said, the regulators should be stepping in saying, "Uh, eh, you can't do that." See, I'm I'm bringing this up because the FCC is one of the actual, you know, areas of the executive branch where there is an, a public interest clause. Yeah. And there's a window for the public to actually voice itself through their through comments. Now people are like eh, comments, they matter. They oh, matter yeah. a whole lot when it comes to the FCC. In the in the rulemaking process, this is actually in all federal agencies, but or executive agencies, but um, specifically the FCC. Yeah, because they actually the have it written into process. their rulemaking process. It is a big deal. It is. It's huge. So that's like you even if you have a very like, you know, you know, favorable like a, a, a group of people in there that are favorable to you know shutting down net neutrality or what have you the comments can turn it because it gets to a point where they can't justify their you know they can't justify doing it based off of the public you know groundswell yeah. of against it yeah so, so if you if you i i think we're going here yeah 
keep an eye. Keep the watchful eye on what's going on. Watch and I will eye. hear too, and I'll tell you, I, I will let you guys know when stuff's going down, and I'll put the address in the yeah. show notes. It's it's so easy to leave a comment. And you just you go online and right? you just hit a button, you type what you say your piece, you hit submit, and it's in there. It's on the record. Yeah. And and it's not time yet, right? Nope. Like but I'm prepping them. Yeah. I'm rallying yeah, the seriously. troops. That is, that is prepping the battlefield. Um, and it's it's just a likely outcome that people are going to have to say, hey, this is probably an overstep. Yeah. Right? Like, it's not healthy for the industry and the public interest in general. Yeah. And I don't mean the show to feel, no. I mean, because it feels political here. The past few episodes have been a bit yeah. that way. Um, and, and it's really because the internet is just, that's the, that it's kind is, of the nature of the internet. And that's what it is. And without the internet, you're not cutting the cord. No, you're not, you know, none of this stuff. It's kind of difficult. It's very difficult. You're, you're, if you're cutting the cord without the internet, you're reading books. Yeah. So and that's that. Yeah. So the internet is pretty much one issue where I will kind of, you know, raise my fist and tell people to get off my lawn and you know be like a crotchety old man about back in my day we had free internet right (laughs) 2400 board yeah (laughs) oh man i remember sorry for anyone who actually heard that noise dad i'm on the computer (laughs) <laughs> oh man! Prior to the internet, I remember. Do you get? Uh, do you remember using? I would have printed lists of phone numbers. Oh, that were bulletin boards. I used to and run a bulletin go, board. Yes, and I would go to bulletin boards and download whatever. I remember one of my favorite things I ever downloaded was Joust. Oh, the yep. old Joust game. Yeah, somebody like wrote it in ANSI graphics. Yeah, exactly. And you would ride on an ostrich with a javelin, or not a javelin, a lance. Um, and and you would, you know, spear eggs, or I forget what you did. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, bulletin boards, man. Yeah, I used to. I used to run one, and I um I had a I was a little more sophisticated because I had a program called Telex where it would actually yeah. like I could put all of the BBSs I would call in it. Yeah. Yeah, and like you could just call them up, but I would, you know, you get you download games. Not me, man. I was typing in straight up phone numbers. <laughs> yeah, well, you you, you like the uh, you know how it's really not that much different than how the oh, internet yeah. is now in spirit because yeah. you have forums and everything. The yeah. problem is, is you have to dial up with your phone, and then you would like write say your piece, and then you would hang up, and then someone else would dial in, and they would say their piece, and then they would hang up. But what was and- really cool about it? <laughs> Is back in the day when they made movies about this, when there was drama of something going on, someone could reach over at the last second and pull the phone off the modem. Oh yeah, that's right. And like, it's oh, done. it would end the whatever. yeah, because that's what would happen. I'd be I'd be downloading something, and then like my dad would pick up the phone and he would hear that <laughs> noise, oh, that and I'm like yelling. I was like, oh, I was like, I was downloading, and back then downloading like half. I remember the biggest game I downloaded was SimCity. And SimCity... The original SimCity. SimCity was like five... It was like... F- five meg. No. I don't, it wasn't that much. I think it was like half a meg. It was like 500 kilobytes. Oof. Like downloaded zip file. And it took like hours. And um, my dad ruined it. He like picked up the phone like midway through the download. Why I oughta... Yeah. Cyclical yeah, redundancy so. check failed. Ugh. <laughs> so, PC load letter. What does that mean? <laughs> so on, uh, I guess on the BBS talk. On that note. Yep. I'm Dennis Restaro. And this is Joel Reeves. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening, everybody. If you're enjoying the show and you're in iTunes, hit that subscribe button. Because that's what helps us out in the rankings. So if we get more subscribers, our show goes up in the iTunes rankings. More people hear the show, we make more episodes. So that's the best way you can support the show is to subscribe. If you've already subscribed and you want to go that extra mile, you can leave us a five-star review in iTunes. That would also get us a little bit of visibility and help out the show. Now, before the show, I mentioned that we were trying to consolidate various emails and questions we're getting in with the intent of uh, turning those into a future episode. Uh, If you wanted to be a part of that, 
you can email us podcast at groundedreason.com. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at Grounded Reason. You can check us out on the Facebook page, or you can head on over to the blog, groundedreason.com. There's uh, plenty of various articles in regards to cord cutting, stuff we discuss on the show. Go ahead and uh, you know feel free to join the conversation. Leave a comment in one of those articles. Again, thanks for listening, and we will see you next week. <laughs>